What conditioning chemotherapy is used in myeloma prior to transplant? What is the dose? The conditioning regimen the standard of care is a melphalan, and it's a very high dose uh, melphalan. We give it at 140 to 200 milligram per meter a square of uh, the patient's um, body uh, mass. And uh, it depends on the patient's kidney function, age. We decide which one would be more appropriate. So that's the standard. Also, we have this regimen of BU sulfan plus melphalan that can be used uh, for high-risk patients, and we can just talk about it based on the phase three clinical drive. Since stem cell transplant is a drug called melphalan, which is a very old drug, it is um, related to a, a wartime chemical, you know, which is used to actually kill people, called nitrogen mustard. And this um, agent basically attacks the DNA of the myeloma molecule, myeloma cells, or the plasma cells, and makes the DNA molecules um, that are two strands. They form cross linkages between the strands, which the, basically destroys the function of the DNA and leads to cell death. And this drug turns out to be one of the most effective drugs in myeloma, even when we have all these new therapies, it still remains a very effective drug. So the, um, and you know, in myeloma, the concept is that Everything that's effective has to be used at some point in, during the per person's um, lifetime with myeloma. So if you miss out on a drug, you missed out on the benefit from that drug, which could sometimes be measured in years, for example. Um, so melphalan is the drug of choice for um, um, transplants in myeloma. When we look at the CIBMTR data, we find that 98% of transplants in America are done with this one drug and uh, as a single agent. In the old days, we also used to do whole body radiation along with melphalan, but turned out that that was not necessary because melphalan alone was good enough, and whole body radiation had a whole host of side effects which was not acceptable. For the most part, you know, we have had high dose melphalan um, as the primary chemotherapy that we give before uh, autologous stem cell transplant. And in fact, uh, the term transplant is kind of a misnomer. Uh, what we're really trying to do uh, when we give the transplant in myeloma is give high doses of melphalan um, um, because melphalan is one of the most effective drugs we have against myeloma. But as a consequence of giving high dose melphalan, patients develop myelosuppression, so their blood counts can go, go really low and stay there because the stem cells get killed and damaged uh, with high dose melphalan. Um, so collecting stem cells in, and giving them back is uh, a way of uh, countering that uh, effect of melphalan. Why is conditioning treatment used? I would say they started doing that just because we want to wipe out the bone marrow completely and replace it with the stem cells that we already collected ahead of time. So when we give the melphalan, it wipes out the whole bone marrow. But if we don't replace it with a stem cell, then uh, the whole blood factory or the bone marrow is going to shut down, so the patient's going to die out of the toxicity of the melphalan. So that's why we collected the stem cells, we gave them melphalan, we wiped out the bone marrow, and then we gave the stem cell back between one to two days after the melphalan, just giving the time for the wash out for the acute toxicity of the melphalan could just go away, the poison goes away from the body, and then we give the stem cells back. And then we give the patient time to the recovery. Basically, we reset the factory. And um, like whenever you have a computer and just reset the computer, and it takes a couple of minutes to come up, exactly we do that one. We're rebooting the patient's bone marrow blood factory, and we let them time for two or three weeks until like a stem cells start working and the cells starts making on its own, and the new stem cells that replace the previous one. How is melphalan administered? So the melphalan administered to the IV or intravenously, and usually it takes 30 to 45 minutes administration. And the patient before getting the melphalan have the ice chip to just um, kind of decrease the chance of getting some con uh, complication of melphalan, such as mucositis or inflammation or sore in the mouth and the GI system. And um, so we do it one to two days uh, before the patient get the actual stem cells. And this one day or two days wash out, usually it's based on the kidney function. So how long does it for this melphalan take to get away from the, the kidney? And if your kidney is not as good as the normal kidney, so that 
uh, poison gonna stay in the body a little bit longer. So that's why we just kind of give two days wash out because we don't want that this poison affecting the stem cells that are going into the body. How many days will melphalan be administered? So between one or two days, it depends on the trial. Like previously, like historically, the people would divide it to the two days. And like some uh, chemo treatment that we have, not for the myeloma, but for others that they give the melphalan, they give the lower dose in the two different days. But routinely right now is a one day. So if they decide to just give it in the two days, they're gonna just make it half. Like for example, if the patient's supposed to receive 200 milligram per meter squared, so 100 of it's gonna be day one, and that other 100 gonna be on a day two. If you increase the intensity of the conditioning therapy, will remissions be longer? A number of regimens have been tried because of course with the, any new drug or even older drugs, we come up with these irrational combination that if we combine melphalan with this other agent, are we going to get better results? But uh, melphalan over decades has actually shown that there is no better alternative than melphalan 200 milligram per meter squared for most patients. Uh, and of course, in some patients, depending on the age and other uh, medical issues, you can decrease the dose. So that's the gold standard for myeloma. So we actually did a phase three trial where our hypothesis based on uh, the work of our colleagues in the lab, uh, in the pharmacology lab, was that when you combine busulfan, uh, another uh, DNA damaging agent that has activity in a number of blood cancers and is used as part of transplant conditioning regimen. Uh, if we combine busulfan with melphalan, uh, are we, uh, we may potentially get better myeloma cell kill, uh, which may translate into a more durable remission. So we conducted a clinical trial that was a phase three trial. So half the patients received uh, the two drug combination. These were all newly diagnosed myeloma patients. They all received a fixed number of uh, induction cycles uh, uh, with uh, whatever the regimen of choice for their treating doctor was, which in most patients is a triplet of uh, a proteasome inhibitor, an immunomodulatory drug, and uh, steroid. Uh, and then they, we collected their stem cells and they got single transplant. Uh, so about 100 patients received melphalan only, and the other 100 uh, patients received busulfan plus melphalan. And uh, we treated uh, 204 patients. And then with a follow-up, uh, uh, the median follow-up extending to almost three years, what we saw was that patients in the busulfan and melphalan arm had about a 20-month longer progression-free survival. So again, this is, uh, and we were pleasantly surprised with that. So again, when you use two drug regimen, of course, you do see more side effects. They were all reversible, but patients had more mucositis, which is basically the inflammation of mouth and throat, uh, which can be quite painful, uh, but it was fully reversible. Uh, we saw more uh, neutropenic fever in patients who got the two drug regimen, which was also expected, and some liver enzyme changes, uh, um, which were also reversible. Where we did not see any increase in toxicity uh, based on the follow up that we have, we did not see any increase in second primary malignancies, uh, but we definitely saw fewer progressions in the two drug arm. So these are very encouraging results. We are very excited. Again, in myeloma, it's hard to show an improvement in overall survival with a median follow-up going only three years, but we'll see. And um, more importantly, um, there were about a third patient, a third of patients in each arm who had high-risk uh, chromosomal abnormalities. And those patients particularly uh, benefited from the two-drug regimen, and we saw significant improvement in progression-free survival in those patients as well. So this is the summary of this regimen. But again, uh, this was the first such trial, and one can make the argument that, well, we still saw more side effects, and then we still haven't seen an improvement in overall survival, and perhaps uh, another group uh, or a cooperative group may want to take up this regimen and do another study, and if they can reproduce the studies, uh, if they can reproduce the results, uh, perhaps this could become the standard at that time. But I think uh, those questions need to be answered before we go there. But this, this was a very encouraging finding, and we were, of course, very excited to see this. 
there have been other clinical trials that have combined proteasome inhibitors like bortezomib and carfilzomib, uh, as well as old-fashioned chemotherapy drugs like busulfan um, with melphalan to show um, uh, that there is an increased depth of response and, and there is a suggestion that compared to historic data that those kind of preparative regimen strategies may actually result in better progression-free survival for patients. In fact, um, uh, MD Anderson did a randomized trial comparing melphalan with uh, 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 bumelphalan um, in myeloma patients, both frontline newly diagnosed patients as well as patients who are in the relapse setting, showing that the BUMEL regimen actually does um, increase uh, progression-free survival benefit um, for myeloma patients. Um, so those are some of the options. Uh, if a patient walks into the clinic today, what would be the standard of care uh, regimen? It would still be melphalan.